Hey, this is Martin Brennan from Imagineer Systems, and today we're going to be looking at the new Mocha Lens for After Effects plugin that's available with Mocha AE and Mocha Pro 3.1. So removing distortion is fine, but how do we use it in combination with our tracking data inside Mocha? Now I'm going to show you how to apply corner pin data to undistorted footage inside After Effects, as well as looking at how to apply corner pin data to footage that we haven't distorted inside After Effects. Okay, so back in Mocha, I'm going to start tracking my shot. Now, tracking with lens distortion is pretty much the same as tracking without distortion. You draw your shape and then track it uh, according to the parameters that you want, so perspective and motion and rotation and so on. So in this case, I'm just going to use the X-Blind tool up here and I'm going to track this doorway because I want to put a sign here. So I'm going to just draw a reasonably large shape around this texture area here. And I'm going to align my surface to begin with so I can see how my track is going. So we'll just bring that down like that. And I'll make sure it sits where I want the sign to eventually sit over the top of this ripped piece of paper here. And we can see as I'm doing that how that warp is being affected by the lens calibration that we did. So once we've got our sign about in place where we want it, I'm just being a bit pedantic about lining it up correctly because I want my sign to be positioned properly. Uh, we can check our perspective if it's got perspective, and in this case it does. And I'm going to just start tracking this and then we'll come back once it's done. Okay, so the shot's done now and we can see if I press play that it's quite a subtle hand motion, but it'll help just lock that sign down when we insert it into the shot. So we can now take this corner pin data and bring it into After Effects in the usual way. So I'm just going to click stop. And we can come down to export tracking data. And in this case, I'm going to keep it on the default of After Effects corner pin supports motion blur. But we now have a new setting inside the export tracking data, which says remove lens distortion. Now, because we've removed the lens distortion inside After Effects with the lens plugin, we also need to remove the lens distortion from our corner pin data, otherwise you won't see the effect when you bring it into After Effects because it will be assuming that you've tracked a distorted shot instead. So this is very important when you're working with lens distortion to actually remove the lens distortion from the corner pin when you paste it into an undistorted shot. So I'm going to click Copy to Clipboard and we can go back over to After Effects. Okay, so back over in After Effects, I'm going to insert my sign. I've got this sign here for parking. Now, I have no idea why anyone would be parking at the top of the steps anyway, but we're going to use this as an example. Now, because this uh, sign is smaller than my composition and we're working with a corner pin, I need to make this sign the same dimensions as the composition so the corner pin works. So I'm first going to just pre-compose it by using Command or Control Shift C. And I'm going to move all attributes into the new composition. And I'm just going to call this Parking Comp. So I'm going to click OK. And then I'm going to open up the composition and select Parking and choose Layer, Transform, Fit to Comp. And this will just stretch our layer to the size of our pre-composition. So now I'm going to close that up and go back to the original. And so our sign is now filling the full size of the composition. So now we can go up to Edit and Paste. And it will sit in place on the undistorted shot. Just so it's clear, I'm going to show you what the difference is if you don't remove the lens distortion from the corner pin. So I'm just going to copy that to the clipboard. And I'll show you what happens if you don't remove lens distortion when you've done an undistorted shot inside After Effects. Okay, so back in After Effects, I'm just going to drag a copy of that same comp that we did before. And I'm going to paste the data that doesn't have the lens distortion removed from the corner pin. So I'm going to press Command or Control V to paste that data in. And you can see how that corner pin is sitting in a completely different spot to our corner pin that has the lens distortion removed. So the reason this corner pin sits here instead is because it's assuming that you haven't removed any lens distortion from the shot. For example, if I was to turn off my original layer here and go back to the source footage, if I turn off the Mocha lens effect, you'll see that the corner pin we exported that didn't remove the lens distortion sits in the correct spot. 
This is because now both the corner pin and the original source footage don't have any lens distortion removed from the data. This means that it will sit in the right spot, but the corner pin itself will not be warped to the original warp of the footage because it is just a straight corner pin. Okay, so how do we actually apply this corner pin to a warped shot and also warp the corner pin? We can do this by pre-comping our corner pin and then applying a lens distortion over the top. So let's do that now. So in order to make the distorted corner pin workflow clear, I'm just going to start the project from scratch. So I've got our original footage with no warp applied to it, and I'm going to bring in my insert. I'm then going to go back to Mocha and copy in the corner pin data that I need for the shot. Okay, so back over in Mocha, I'm just going to export my data again, and I'm still going to remove the lens distortion. This will become clear in a minute, but the reason we need to remove lens distortion is that we need to flatten out our data first, and then warp it with the lens effect. So we'll see that in process in a moment. So I'm just going to copy it to the clipboard and go back over to After Effects. Back in After Effects, I'm just going to do Command or Control V to paste my data back in. And you can automatically see it's sitting in the wrong spot because my corner pin data has been flattened and assuming that my footage has been flattened as well. But we are going to now do another step to warp this into the correct position. So I'm going to select my parking comp and I'm going to pre-compose this one. So I'm going to go up to Layer, Pre-Compose, or you can use Shift-Command-C. And I'm just going to call this one Parking Warp Insert. And I'm going to click OK. So now our corner pin is locked inside a full dimensions of a pre-comp. And this will help us warp the entire area for the final lens export. So we need to go back over to Mocha now and export our lens data. Okay, so in Mocha we've got our lens module up and I'm going to just click export lens data and copy that to the clipboard and now we can go back to After Effects. Okay, so back in After Effects I'm just going to press Command or Control V to paste the data and the effect will be applied onto the layer. Now you can see immediately that it's completely wrong. Now this is because by default our plugin will remove distortion instead of applying it. So we just need to go over to the effect control and go to remove distortion and click apply distortion instead. And now it will warp to the correct spot. Now if your insert is moving around a lot and you start to see it clip, you may need to go inside the pre-comp and make the pre-comp a little bit larger. This is because the corner pin is inside the pre-comp and is going off the edge of that pre-comp. So you need to go into the pre-comp here and just go to composition settings and just change the size of your pre-comp. So I'm going to make this about 2000. And then if we close that up and go back, you now shouldn't see any clipping uh, in the shot. If you still see clipping, you can increase the size a little bit further, but that's just a way to troubleshoot any clipping that you see because the pre-comp is cutting off the corner pin edge. This is why we define a size mode inside the plugin so that you can choose the footage size, which is now a bit bigger, or the comp size, which will assume the size of the composition you're working with. So you can see how that's push that off the side there because we're no longer using the footage size. So I'm going to put that back to footage size and now it's treating it like the correct size that it is. Finally I just want to talk very briefly about limitations of extremely warped footage. Now this is a fisheye so it is going to cause some issues when you try and do a track. When I'm actually tracking down here, I'm getting quite a good piece of warping because we're not pushing too far near the edges. But a fisheye by default is actually wrapping quite tightly to the edges of the lens. So if I drew a shape over here, say, off the edge of my piece of footage, you're going to see a little bit of bad distortion starting to happen because we're limited to the size of the warp in place, where it's compressing at the edges of that lens. So you may find that you get some problematic tracks or incorrect looking warps at the edges of your footage for really severely distorted footage. This is just a limitation of the warp in general, so you may need to avoid that or flatten out your comp first and then try and track that separately. Keep in mind, however, this is usually only for really severe distortion and also only usually happens at the edges of your footage. 
So that's how you use the Mocha Lens for After Effects plugin using Mocha AE 3.1 or Mocha Pro 3.1. If you'd like to see more lens features, check out Mocha Pro 3.1, which has immediate rendering for your lens distortion, as well as distortion map calibration and the ability to export out to distortion maps and Imagineer lens data. For more information and tutorials on the lens module or any of the features inside Mocha Pro and Mocha AE, go to the website at imagineersystems.com. You can also ask questions on the forum at forum.imagineersystems.com or go to the Facebook page at facebook.com slash imagineersystems.